finally figures out the answer to the universe. A light position over the subject is often called a top light or topper. A key light positioned beneath the subject, illuminating them from below, is unusual since very few buildings have lighted floors and the sun rarely shines up. This lighting setup is usually used to support the portrayal of a character or scene as villainous, scary, powerful, evil, or threatening. Low angle lighting can also paint a scene as futuristic or invoke a stylish fashion look. If the low angle light is motivated by someone peering into a crystal ball or chest of treasure, a low angled light will convey awe or wonder. If you need two or more key lights to get enough light on your scene, place them as close together as possible so they merge into one light to avoid multiple shadows. If your talent's going to move during a shot, position the key light or direct the actors so they will not cast an undesired shadow on other subjects or objects in the scene. If you have a mic boom, you'll want to make sure the shadow of the boom doesn't fall in your scene if the boom operator must follow the subject. The mic boom should usually be on the opposite side of the key light. Usually, you want to light the background differently than your subject, so you need to minimize the amount of key light falling on the background. Light that shines where you don't want it is called spill. It's especially important to contain spill when working with light-colored walls because they can often overwhelm your subject because of their brightness. One good way to stop light spill is to position a large black opaque rectangle-shaped panel between the light and the background so that a shadow is cast on the area of the background that's visible in your frame. This large black rectangle is called a flag. A flag can be as simple as a piece of black foam core or artboard clamped to a stand or a professional flag made of cloth or metal. An interesting technique is using a flag to cut light to an actor's face to simulate light coming in through a window. Black wrap is a thick, black, heavy-duty aluminum foil that comes on rolls like the kitchen variety, but a lot wider. Black wrap can be cut and shaped for all kinds of purposes in lighting. The reason we bring it up here is that a sheet of black wrap makes an excellent, easily shapeable flag that can be attached to almost anything to prevent spill. Now we're finally to the second point in four-point lighting, the fill light. The purpose of the fill is to lighten, but not eliminate, attached shadows created by the key light to set the desired mood. Usually, instead of using a light for fill, I use a reflector, which is a flat, usually white object that bounces key light back into the shadow areas left by the key light. The fill light should have a soft quality since its purpose is to wrap around the subject and fill in the shadow areas that are not lit by the key light. A reflector is a soft light source since light is bouncing off the entire surface of the reflector. If you move the key light more to the side, leaving a wider shadow on the front of your subject, the fill will move more to the front, thereby filling in that wider shadow area. A piece of white artboard or foam core available for a few dollars in an arts and crafts store makes an excellent reflector. Some foam core is white on one side and gold on the other, which makes for a warmer fill light that can be really nice. Clamp this foam core to a microphone boom stand with a tripod base from a musical instrument store and you have a valuable but very inexpensive lighting tool. As an added benefit, you can white balance to this reflector if you forgot a white balance card. Professional reflectors collapse for easy transport and sometimes have multiple surfaces for different effects. This one has five different surfaces available, white, gold for a warmer fill, silver to reflect more light, silver gold, and translucent. When you're shooting in rooms with white walls, you might not need a fill light or reflector because there's plenty of fill light bouncing off the walls and ceiling. The overall existing light level in a location is called the ambient, or base light level. Remember that light bouncing off any surface will be colored by that surface. So if your talent's next to a green wall, you're going to see a greenish tinge on the subject on the side next to the wall. If you're getting too much fill from a white wall, you might need to move your subject away from the wall, or a cool trick is to use a negative reflector. A black piece of foam core or artboard placed beside your subject out of the frame will absorb light and create darkness on that side of your subject. Now that you know what tools you can use for fill, how do you decide how much fill you want? The amount of fill you use determines your lighting ratio. 
Lighting ratio is a term expressing the difference between the brightness of a subject's brighter side and the darker side. If the lights shining on both sides of your subject are equal, you have a lighting ratio of 1 to 1. If you make one light half the intensity, you now have a lighting ratio of 2 to 1. You'll choose a lighting ratio to create a mood and make your subjects look good. A ratio of 1 to 1 is high key lighting, flat and bland, but might work well for a scene where you really want no drama, few shadows and low modeling. A lighting ratio of about 2 to 1 will work well for a lot of video projects. It allows for light shadows that model your subject and provide depth, but still have detail. Higher lighting ratios, like 4 to 1 and higher, have a lot of contrast with very dark attached shadows for a very dramatic look. Anything beyond 6 to 1 or so and your shadow areas will basically go pure black. Regardless of other lights in your scene, the lighting ratio refers only to the ratio between the key light and the fill. The third light in four-point lighting is called the backlight, which is positioned behind and usually above the subject. Sometimes you'll want or need to position the backlight a little to the side. The purpose of a backlight is to define the edges of your subject and separate them from the background by creating a rim of light around your subject. The backlight is often the difference between a mundane, mediocre shot and one that really pops off the screen. The backlight is very important to draw your viewer's eye to your subject and create depth in your composition. Backlighting is essential where there's a danger of the subject merging with the background, such as an actor with a dark shirt in front of a dark background. Usually hard light is used for backlighting. For smaller areas, I use a little 150 watt Lowell Pro light that is usually plenty. If you don't want your stand to show up in the shot, like I have, you can use a little clamp with the Pro light. Here's a shot with nothing but a pro light with a blue gel on it. For larger rooms, you can use a Lowell Omni light for a backlight. You could even use a bright halogen desk lamp for a small interview setup or a halogen work light for a larger area. To guide and shape light to fall where you want and nowhere else, Professional lights have hinged metal flaps called barn doors. The barn doors are like tiny flags attached to the light itself. Remember that once a light has been on for a minute or two, the barn doors get hot, so use thick gardening gloves when adjusting them. In a pinch, you can grab barn doors with a C47, but never touch anything that's really hot. That actually applies to life as well as lighting. You can use a pale blue gel on the backlight called a CTB gel that tints the backlight about the same color temperature as sunlight. It can give a shot an open, airy feel like there's a window or skylight somewhere behind the subject. An amber, orange, or rose-colored gel in the backlight will bring out warm highlights in brown or medium-colored hair and subliminally simulate a happy, optimistic sunrise or sunset through a window in the background feel. If the backlight is too bright and you can't move it farther away, you can add an ND gel to bring the light intensity down. A color gel or diffusion gel will also bring the light down, but an ND gel does it without coloring or softening the light. A backlight positioned lower and to the side of your subject accentuates their jawline and is called a kicker. It's not an unquestioned absolute law of lighting that you're forced to automatically put a bright white rim of light around every subject in every shot. You want to make sure your key and fill are dialed in as well as possible before turning on your backlight. But with the lower resolution and contrast ratio of DV compared to film, I think it's good advice to use backlighting wherever it's appropriate to define your subject and add sparkle, shine, and a professional polish to your footage. One thing to watch out for when positioning your backlight is lens flare. When a light is shining directly on your camera lens, you'll pick up a pattern of dots across your screen that's probably unwanted. To eliminate lens flare, Raise the backlight high and aim it down so the light shines on your subject, but not on the lens of your camera. You can also use the barn doors on the light to shield the lens. Camcorders have flare hoods that shelter the lens from flare, though matte boxes usually do a better job because they're bigger. In some cases, you'll probably need a little black wrap to fully guard the lens from direct light, either on a light itself or on the camcorder's flare hood.
The fourth point in our four-point lighting method is called the background light. With a separate light, you can further distinguish your subject from the background by lighting the background darker or in a different color than your subject. The technique of lighting different layers of your composition, like foreground and background, with different intensities, colors, or qualities of light is called layered lighting. The secret to cool background lighting is to cast a pleasing pattern of light and shadow on the background to add visual interest as well as further separate your subject from the background. We often use a Lowell Omni light for background lighting. The Omni is a focusable hard light. By moving a lever, you can adjust the beam from wide to spot. A halogen work light from a home improvement or hardware store could also make a fine background light. You want the background light high enough and at enough of an angle to avoid too many highlights off shiny background objects that could compete with your subject for attention. Often, a colored gel can be added to your background light to further distinguish the background from your subject. Closing the barn doors to a diagonal slash with an amber gel creates an optimistic morning ray of sunlight through the window splashing on the wall kind of effect. A blue gel for your background paints more of a moonlight, mysterious, or techno look. A gradient from light to dark on the background is also very effective. A cookie is a tasty treat to provide your crew while shooting. It's also short for a professional device called a cucoloris, which has a variety of shapes cut out of it and is positioned in front of a light to cast an interesting pattern of light and shadow. You can make your own cookies out of dough, chocolate chips, I mean, you can make your own lighting cookies by cutting shapes out of black wrap or black artboard, or you can use a plant, branch of a tree, window frame, Venetian blinds, or any other object with a random or regular pattern to get a great pattern of light and shadow on your background. If you're shooting an extended scene indoors at night and windows are visible in the shot, shine an Omni light with a blue gel through Venetian blinds or a window frame shape on the wall behind your shot. This is moonlight. That ends our walkthrough of four-point lighting, covering many of the options and tools. Now let's summarize. The key light is the primary light source in your scene. The fill light, or reflector, lightens, but not eliminates shadows left by the key light. The backlight paints a rim of light around your subject to define them and separate them from the background. The background light paints a pattern of light and shadow on the background. Now here's the dvcreators.net four-step lighting process. This is a great starting place for a lot of different shots, from interviews to scenes from a short or feature film to marketing or training videos. Number one, position the key light for the mood and effect you want on the shot. Try to minimize light spill on the background. Then place a reflector at a 90 degree angle to the key light to lighten shadows left by the key light. Move the reflector closer or farther to create the desired lighting ratio. Then. Put a backlight behind your subject to paint a rim of light around their head and shoulders. Add a warm or cool colored gel if desired. Use an ND gel if the backlight's too bright. And watch for lens flare. Finally, position a background light to cast an interesting pattern of light and shadow on the background. Use a colored gel if desired. Lighting a scene with this four-point formula whether it's with a Lowell DV Creators Kit or a China Ball whiteboard and halogen work light, will give you amazing professional results in a wide range of situations. Shooting outside is almost always a big challenge. First of all, you have this monster key light that's very hard to control because you just can't put it where you want it. Also, over a course of a day, it just keeps moving and changing brightness and color all by itself. Cinematographers hate shooting in direct sunlight. The first options are to try to shoot in the shade or to choose an overcast day that will give you a giant soft light that might be a little flat but much better than the blinding sun. So how do you get great results shooting outside? Here is the dvcreators.net amazing secret outdoor lighting technique that will enable you to capture stunningly beautiful footage outside while other shooters who don't have this course are struggling with harsh, blown out, over contrasty outdoor shots with squinty subjects. First of all, shoot as early or late in the day as you can, during magic hour if possible. 
Position your camera and subject so that the rising or setting sun is in back of and off to the side of your subject, so it rims the edge of your subject like a backlight. Of course, make sure the sun itself is not actually in the frame. Then, put a reflector in front of your subject on the opposite side from the sun. The reflector will bounce sunlight back onto the front of your subject to fill in the shadow. If a white reflector is not bouncing enough light onto the front of your subject, or you have to put the reflector farther away, maybe in a wider shot, you can use a silver or gold reflector to reflect more light. However, with silver or gold reflectors, it's nice to use a reflector stand because any jiggling of the reflector by your assistant will make the light on your subject fluctuate like they were standing next to a silver or gold lake or fire. This outdoor lighting technique can be used at other times in the morning or late afternoon, but gets more and more difficult towards midday when the sun is higher in the sky. If you're not shooting in magic hour, the rim light from the sun might be too bright and blow out when your exposure is set for your subject, but I bet it will still look better than your alternatives. It's common in big Hollywood films for the sun to overexpose on the edges of subjects when used as a rim light, so you're in good company if this happens. Another added benefit of using the sun as a backlight is that your talent is much happier not having to squint into the sun. Of course, you do want to shoot at noon when you want that harsh, unflattering, high contrast look for the high noon gunfight scene in your western. If there's no way to position your subject and camera to use this technique, a fallback is to try to use the sun as a key light, 45 degrees to the side, and fill in the shadows with a reflector. In some cases, you might want to use a diffuser to soften the harshness of direct sunlight. A diffuser is a large piece of translucent fabric on a frame that you position between the sun and the subject to diffuse and soften harsh sunlight. The diffuser, in effect, becomes a large soft key light that retains the nice sunlight look but makes a huge improvement in the quality of the shot by filtering the harshness out of the sunlight. In this setup, the diffuser is also cutting the light to the reflector. When shooting indoor scenes with sunlight coming in through windows, you can use